with an Andrew Little-led government. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. And Mr Speaker, new Prime Minister Bill English has got off to a cracking start in stark contrast to the confused, to the disunited and to the very messy start to the year that Andrew Little has made. And in this contribution, I want to contrast the progress and the leadership that the new PM has made relative uh, to that mess opposite. Now, Mr. Pro uh, Mr Speaker, we begin the year with significant international uncertainty. And any Prime Minister that was putting this country's interests at the forefront would make their number one priority to connect early with that world. And that is why it was absolutely the right choice for Prime Minister Bill English in the early weeks of January, when most of us were sunning on the beaches, to go to London to meet with new Prime Minister of the UK, Theresa May, to go to Brussels and meet with John Claude Juncker in terms of the EU and the instability and issues that were there, and with Angela Merkel in Germany. You see, at the same time as Andrew Little was lying on the beaches, Bill English was already out of the starting blocks looking after New Zealand's interests. And then we move to Ratana and Waitangi Day. And what I saw at Ratana and what I saw at Waitangi is the most comfortable Prime Minister I have seen in two decades in engaging with the issues that matter in respect of good race relations in this country. You see, Mr Speaker, Bill English is moving race relations into a new chapter where we can honestly celebrate Waitangi Day. And he had his finger absolutely on the pulse of New Zealand public opinion in refusing to be part of the fiasco that has become part of TT Marae. And I contrast that with the contradictory messages from Andrew Little in one breath criticising the Prime Minister for not going to TT Marae and then saying in the next breath, if he were Prime Minister on the 6th of February 2018, he might not go. That is just so symptomatic of the lack of vision and confusion within Labour around something as important as our National Day. And I stood yesterday with our Prime Minister at the Marais in both East and West Auckland and felt a sense of optimism amongst New Zealanders about the future of race relations and the contributions from our new Prime Minister on the issues of enterprise for iwi, on the issues of whānau, show that he has got his finger on the pulse of the issues that matter for Māori. And then, Mr Speaker, we came to the Prime Minister's announcement of the date of the 23rd of September for the general election this year. And again, the Prime Minister was showing leadership in the very good culture that has been set by his predecessor, John Key, in being open and honest and straightforward about the most important of institutions, and that's the election of this parliament by democratic means. And I contrast it. How much notice did Labour give when they were government of elections? They used it to play political games. They gave just six weeks' notice of the election in 2002, just eight weeks in 2005 and 2008, and in stark contrast, the approach that this Prime Minister has shown is real leadership in not playing games with our democratic institutions, but being fair and upfront with New Zealand at the beginning of the year on the date of our general election. 
And Mr Speaker, can I contrast that with the moves inside the Labour Party? Because if there is anything we know about the world beginning this year of 2017, it is that it is an uncertain and unstable place that requires stable government, and we do not even have stability, stability within the Labour Party. And I say this to my colleagues, can any member of my team remember a time in the last 10 years when a new candidate has been announced for the National Party and on the same day attacked by their own colleagues? I've checked the record. There's been over 30 talented candidates join our parliamentary team in here in Parliament, and I challenge members opposite. Tell me once when on the very day Willie Jackson is announced as the candidate, the Labour Party is ripping their guts apart in public and they pretend they're fit to govern the country and they can't even govern themselves, Mr Speaker. And then you come to core issues of policy, Mr Speaker, and again, the contradictions stand all over the place. I say to members opposite, where do they stand on an important policy like charter schools that's about getting kids ahead? Willie Jackson is a strong advocate and is now a member of your team. And so what is it? Is it the Labour Party's marriage to the teacher unions and the opposition to innovation and education that is going to rule or the championing of Willie Jackson for those sorts of causes. And then you get the same contradictions in Fane Ora, of which Willie Jackson is an advocate for what this government is doing with the Māori Party, but Labour uh, has pledged to rip up. They do not know what they stand for. And then we come, Mr Speaker, to the State of the Nation speeches, where New Zealanders were looking for substance from their political leaders on issues that matter. And you had a speech from Bill English that was not only tough on crime, but tough on the causes of crime. And I can say from my community in Nelson, the additional 1,100 police staff, the extra investment of $500 million into additional resources for police and justice. But the real visionary part of that speech from Bill English was not just a debate about putting resources into the public service, but expecting results from the public sector. Results in terms of crime reductions, results in terms of responsiveness of key public services like the 111 number and the proposed non-emergency uh, emergency number as well. Now I contrast that, Mr Speaker, with the warm, fuzzy and sizzle that you got from the Labour and the Greens. Did they answer any one of the substantive questions of contradictions of policy between the Labour and the Greens and what they would do in government? Because there are over 20 questions that the media have rightly asked, what would a Labour-Green government do? Would it be Green Party policy or Labour policy? Were they privileged to form the next government of New Zealand? And they could not answer, and a government in waiting that cannot answer those basic questions is not fit to govern. Mr Speaker, I want to finish with Pike. Because today, the Leader of the Opposition again showed that he is unfit to government and riddled with contradictions. We've got over 650 pages of very detailed analysis showing that it is not safe. Uh, for men to enter down the drift of that mind. But here's the contradiction. The Leader of the Opposition has argued it's safe in one breath, but in the next that we have to exempt it from the very workplace safety laws that we put in place in response to that disaster. Both those positions, Mr Speaker, cannot be true. Either it is safe, and you can do it under the law. That noteworthy Mr Little said was too weak. Too weak. Either it can be done safely under that law, or it is not safe. And his position on that issue shows that he has failed the most basic tests of leadership, and that his contradictory position 
just shows how weak and hopeless the opposition is. Mr Speaker, I'm proud to be part of this Bill English-led government, the vision and the leadership that it's providing Order. for New Zealand, and looking forward to the election later this year. Uh, Stephen Browning.